All righty. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, tonight is the policy workshop for the 2024 Port Orchard uh, Comprehensive Plan update. Uh, the comprehensive plan is our forward-looking policy document uh, that is citywide and, as the name states, comprehensive. It looks at everything from land use to housing to transportation, natural systems, everything in between. Uh, the purpose of tonight's workshop, uh, just to give a broad agenda, is uh, we'll give a brief uh, refresh on the context of comprehensive planning uh, in the state of Washington, what that means for Kitsap County, and specifically what that means for the city of Port Orchard. Uh, with that being said, uh, tonight's primary focus is on the policies as a policy workshop, and what we're going to do after a brief presentation uh, from our side is break out into a more open session format uh, review the existing goals and policies in the city's comprehensive plan, uh, and then open it up for questions, feedback, uh, and then provide an avenue uh, for you guys to provide the city with feedback as we go through updating the goals and policies in this plan. Um, like I mentioned, that is uh, the purpose of tonight's presentation. Really, uh, after the presentation, we'll break out into the workshop session, and it's primarily intended to be in open, unprogrammed format. Uh, we would love to get your questions, your concerns, your hopes uh, for the city, and then our job is to figure out how we translate those into the goals and policies that you see in the comprehensive plan document to ensure that the city's on track from your perspective of where we wanna be over the next 20 years. Uh, with the Growth Management Act, uh, just a basic context, uh, this is really step one of comprehensive planning in Washington state in 1990, uh, the state enacted the Growth Management Act, uh, essentially establishing requirements for fully planning counties of uh, what these counties have to plan for and include in their comprehensive plans to establish a baseline across uh, the entire state for fully planning counties uh, of what must be included in their comprehensive plan, uh, assessed and understood from a policy and goal standpoint. Uh, with that being said, uh, who plans for growth? Uh, there are multiple uh, qualifying counties, uh, Kitsap County being one of those. Uh, in addition to GMA, uh, the Growth Management Act, Kitsap County specifically is also within the context of PSRC, the Puget Sound Regional Council, so another advisory board, uh, which is a, another layer of regulation that we need to be aware of as we update the city's comprehensive plan. Uh, comprehensive plans currently on their current cycle have to be updated every eight years. Uh, recent legislation has amended that cycle to every 10 years, uh, so that's the reason uh, that we're here for the 2024 update. The city last updated the comprehensive plan in 2016, and the major focus of this update process is to ensure that, again, we're on track with the goals and policies that have been established, and this gives the city an opportunity to fine-tune the goals and policies, identify major changes since our 2016 update, and uh, figure out major uh, items of importance, and particularly for this update cycle, common themes that we've seen across the Puget Sound region are primarily related to housing and land use. Uh, GMA goals, uh, so from the Growth Management Act perspective, uh, it really touches on all of the broad topics under the planning umbrella. Uh, we won't go into all of these individually, uh, but really this is just to say that GMA uh, asks all the participating jurisdictions to look at a broad array of items ranging from land use and housing like we discussed, natural systems, parks, transportation, utilities, capital facilities. There's a wide umbrella that this comprehensive plan covers and that has to be included in this comprehensive plan update. Uh, there are specific required elements of the comprehensive plan, so although GMA addresses a wide list of planning items, the minimum required elements for a comprehensive plan to be certified at the state level uh, include land use, housing, capital facilities, utilities, transportation, uh, and a new element in this legislative cycle is uh, climate change and resiliency. Uh, from a logistical standpoint, climate change and resiliency uh, has to be adopted following our 2024 update cycle. Uh, the actual deadline is uh, past December of 2024, which is when this update is due. Uh, but what that means is we have an opportunity in this update cycle to establish the baseline of goals and policies, excuse me, that the city would like to see as we develop this element. Mm -hmm. 
one second while we move on to the next slide. Um, with that being said, really, growth, the Growth Management Act, again, establishes the baseline that we need to plan for and prepare for. Um, moving on from there, there's essentially building blocks of regulation and policy that apply to comprehensive plans. Uh, the state level is GMA, gets established statewide. Um, from there, a more regional specific look is PSRC, like I mentioned before, the Puget Sound Regional Council. And that's another layer of uh, regulation that establishes what must be included for certification from PSRC as an agency. And the primary goal for getting a comprehensive plan certified is uh, funding. It makes the city eligible for transportation dollars uh, and allows the city to look at specific areas uh, called sub areas or centers, uh, PSRC calls them centers, of where the city wants to prioritize growth, development, infrastructure, uh, and transportation primarily. As this starts back up, <clears throat> um, I'll discuss the workshop uh, a little bit. So a little bit forward looking, we'll dive into PSRC and their regulations uh, once this jumps back online here. Uh, but tonight's workshop is uh, a look at the existing goals and policies. There is a large volume of information, uh, as you can see on the boards all around the room and a lot of text. Um, so just to set a realistic expectation uh, for feedback that we expect tonight, um, we're not requiring anybody to submit their feedback tonight. There's not a deadline on what we want to hear uh, here tonight. Uh, but what we would like to do is understand the priorities from your perspective uh, as they relate to the existing comprehensive plan elements, um, ideas of new goals and policies that reflect updated uh, changes since the 2016 update, or are there existing goal and policy language that works pretty well, but could be fine-tuned to current situations. So as we uh, break from the presentation, <clears throat> once we get that back up online here, uh, really it's gonna be an open format session where you're encouraged to walk around, look at individual elements of the comprehensive plans that are of particular importance to you. Uh, and we have uh, staff here on site that can answer any questions or give you additional information uh, that could address concerns that you have and how we can implement those concerns into efficient and effective goal and policy language. Just for the record on the recording, uh, the internet connection had a brief break. So once we get that back up online, uh, we'll get the presentation back up online. Um, but in the interim, I think what we can discuss, uh, I don't wanna go too far into PSRC because I think there's a lot of information that visually will uh, help to have a background on. I can speak through the information, but I don't think it'll stick as well without uh, a visual aid to that effect. <clears throat> I do want to take this opportunity to thank you guys for coming out on a dark and dreary night. Much appreciated taking time out of your day uh, to come discuss policies and goals uh, of the comprehensive plan. Um, it can be hard to get community engagement for these types of events, especially content heavy workshops like this one is. Very content heavy, admittedly. Um, what we're going to do is leave open our public comment period uh, until the last week of March, so almost a full month to review and digest this information. Uh, all of this information is not just contained on the boards that you see here. This is more of a visual aid for tonight's workshop. Uh, all of this is recreated online as well in the same format that you see here tonight. Uh, and that'll allow you over the course of the next month to really dig in and digest specifically areas of your interest. Uh, we would love to get feedback on every single goal and policy because that helps us on the update side to understand where the priorities are. 
uh, but understand that's a significant lift. So in no way are you obligated or required to respond to any or all of these items, but the more feedback that we get from the community side helps us establish our priorities as, we, as the update goes on. Uh, so moving on from this policy workshop, what we're gonna do is update each of the comprehensive plan elements, uh, and each of those elements are reflected on the boards that you see here tonight and reflected in the GMA goals of land use and housing. Uh, so you'll see a lot of correlation between the GMA goals and the individual comp plan elements that we have up on the board tonight. Perfect, thank you guys for the quick troubleshooting. Much appreciated. Um, we can uh, move on from this slide. Really, this is kind of a visual cue of all the growth management uh, primary uh, areas of focus. So taking a look at the state level and dialing down to the regional perspective, uh, comprehensive planning is very much its namesake. It's meant to be comprehensive. It's not an effort for the city of Port Orchard to undergo individually. Um, it's a lot of local, regional, and statewide coordination. Uh, so with that being said, PSRC, the Puget Sound Regional Council, uh, is really the next step of this building block for comprehensive planning. So they take it from the state level, bring it down a little bit more specific to the Puget Sound region, including Kitsap County and the city of Port Orchard. Uh, from a regional perspective, uh, PSRC is primarily interested in uh, coordinating regional transportation networks, uh, identifying uh, centers, as they call them, areas of uh, focused growth, so we can prioritize both transportation, infrastructure, land use, and housing development, uh, and then doing that in a way that is not only county specific, but region specific. Uh, with that being said, Kitsap County, uh, as an agency, has a role in this comprehensive planning process. Kitsap County has their own comprehensive plan and they establish uh, the Kitsap County countywide planning policies. Uh, so the city of Port Orchard, the way that impacts us here locally is the Kitsap County countywide planning policies establish uh, the consistency level. They're, the city's comprehensive plan has to be consistent with the adopted countywide county planning policies. It's kind of a mouthful there, uh, but essentially the county is saying from our regional look at the county level, we have a understanding of all the cities within the county, their growth patterns, their growth demands over the next 20 years, and growth projections, and can uh, distribute population numbers uh, to that effect. Uh, with that being said, uh, big pieces of uh, coordination with Kitsap County for the comprehensive plan. As I mentioned, consistency, that's the big one. It uh, doesn't do a lot of benefit for either Kitsap County or the city of Port Orchard to develop their plans independently. They need to speak to one another as partners. Uh, accountability, um, essentially ensuring that all the Kitsap County countywide planning policies are being implemented in an effective way at the local level here at the city of Port Orchard. Uh, and then alignment, making sure that the goals are not diverging from one another, ideally over the 20 year horizon for this update cycle these goals are getting closer together and becoming more realistic at the regional scale. So that brings us local, uh, City of Port Orchard, the reason that you guys are here tonight to take a look here at the local level, what the goals and policies are and how they impact uh, the city's development over the next 20 years. Uh, so that's the top level of our building block. Uh, so in a, in a quick summary version, those are really the, the four major layers of regulation and, and policy consideration for the comprehensive plan. GMA, PSRC, Kitsap County, and here at the local level. Uh, how, has, how has Port Orchard conducted comprehensive planning? Just a brief background on this. Uh, Port Orchard originally incorporated a Sydney back in 1890, uh, updated their name in the early 1900s. Uh, as I mentioned, 1990, big time gap there from a planning perspective. Uh, 1990 established the Growth Management Act, our statewide planning consideration. 
1992, shortly following that, Kitsap County adopted their countywide comprehensive plan, including countywide planning policies. Uh, and then the city has started undergoing comprehensive plan updates starting in 1995, and then consistent with the eight-year update cycle as recently as 2016. So our 2016 comprehensive plan that we're updating with this uh, is the next stage of our up eight-year update cycle. Following this comprehensive plan, that update cycle is gonna go to every 10 years. Uh, so the next time we'll be doing a major update of the comprehensive plan will be 2034. Uh, how does a comprehensive plan work? Just a kind of general gauge to show an understanding or uh, provide a little bit more context of how these goals and policies will be used. They're uh, intended to be more than uh, words in a document that sit on a shelf. And the way that these goals and policies are implemented uh, really trickle down from the policy level to the development level. And the way that happens is the goals and policies establish the framework of what the development code should look like, what the city wants to prioritize in terms of density, uh, housing numbers, housing types, how they look, where they are, uh, how important is environmental conservation. There's a minimum standard uh, that local jurisdictions can adopt based on local preferences. So there's a lot of uh, flexibility from the goals and policy standpoint on how those get incorporated into actual development standards like a zoning code. So for tonight's purposes, uh, the 2024 periodic update, uh, we have a couple key, uh, key criteria, key uh, ideas, key goals coming out of this 2024 comprehensive plan update. Uh, this is a periodic update from the state side, uh, which means that we are taking our 2016 comprehensive plan and doing a refresh of it. Uh, we're not building from the ground up, but we do have a lot of opportunity to fine tune the existing language and make it current. Uh, a lot has changed since 2016, uh, primarily a pandemic. That seems like the big one for sure. Uh, but I, obviously housing affordability is a big issue as well. Uh, so we can take current items in the city since the 2016 update, incorporate those into the 2024 update, set the groundwork for where the city wants to be in 20, 2044. Uh, so the periodic update, as I mentioned, will be moving to every 20 years. Uh, as a planning uh, horizon now, we look out about project 20 years out, so 2044 is the name of this comprehensive plan. Uh, population growth is probably the biggest Biggest key, not only in the city of Port Orchard, but Kitsap County and the entire Puget Sound region and frankly, the entire state of Washington. Uh, so how do we manage it? How do we make sure that growth happens in a coordinated way? How do we make sure that growth re reflects uh, the ideas and preferences of the community? Uh, and this comprehensive plan allows us to do that. Uh, there are opportunities for annual amendments to the comprehensive plan. So although the update cycle is currently every eight years, moving to every 10, uh, there are annual amendment opportunities, so this is not the only chance we get to fine tune the language, but as a part of the update cycle, this is really our major effort uh, from the city side to spend a lot of time and effort making sure we're on the right track over the next 20 years. Uh, with that being said, 2024 update cycle has seen some significant new legislation uh, come out of, uh, from, from the state level. Uh, a couple of those that I wanna highlight tonight, specifically through the lens of uh, our goals and policies include uh, House Bill 1110, primarily oriented towards uh, middle housing. Uh, what this requires is a, a minimum of three units per lot um, in urban areas, which Port Orchard is. Uh, and the way that typically gets approached is through uh, accessory dwelling units, ADUs, uh, as the, the typical kind of nomenclature in the planning industry uh, to save a little bit of uh, long name there. Um, what that requires, in, a, in addition to three units uh, per acre, or three units per parcel, is uh, allowing middle housing, uh, which is typically a little bit of a different look than our traditional detached single family housing. Uh, the state establishes that jurisdictions get to pick from a menu of six types of middle housing, ranging duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes, uh, essentially your traditional um, what can be considered multi-family housing to a degree, um, and figuring out how, do, how does the city at the local level pick from that menu of options and implement them in a way that checks the regulatory box, but also maintains a community character uh, from the community side. Uh, 
the middle housing bill also limits uh, some of the administrative portions of middle housing, primarily related to uh, SEPA environmental review, uh, appeals related to SEPA, um, limits parking requirements. Uh, that's traditionally been a way that some jurisdictions limit housing uh, quantity is by requiring uh, a lot of parking on sites for housing, uh, but House Bill 1110 at the state level limits that, those parking requirements. So there's a minimum box that we have to check for regulatory compliance, uh, but that can be distilled into our goals and policies of how do we want to see House Bill 1110 implemented here locally. Uh, another House bill that's pretty significant and related to this middle housing housing bill, House Bill 1137, uh, accessory dwelling units, uh, and similar to the requirement that we see of a minimum of three units per parcel for urban areas, uh, House Bill 1337 says you must uh, require, or you are required to allow two accessory dwelling units on a parcel, essentially getting to the three units required in House Bill 1110. So the two speak to each other a lot. Uh, another new major uh, GMA legislation, Growth Management Act legislation coming out of this update cycle is uh, related to climate, and that's the climate and resiliency element that I referenced uh, before. Uh, so the uh, adoption deadline is 2029. Uh, the Department of Commerce and Puget Sound Regional Council are putting together uh, updated guidance for jurisdictions to include in their comprehensive plan elements. Uh, there's a lot of scientific background in climate change in terms of reducing vehicle miles traveled, sea level change, all that, those items. And this update cycle, uh, the amount of scientific research uh, the state has recognized, not realistic to incorporate over the next year based on the amount of scientific background. But again, what we can do through the lens of the policy workshop is establish goals and policies that you guys on the community side find are important to implement today and build a blueprint for what gets adopted in 29. Uh, with that being said, uh, the periodic update timeline. So where are we at with the city's comprehensive plan update? Uh, currently, we're updating individual elements. Uh, so each chapter is going through draft updates. Uh, the Planning Commission is receiving a regular schedule of draft chapters at this point. Every month, they're getting two to three draft chapters to be updated. Uh, and those are first drafts, really the city's first look at what needs to be updated. Let's hear from the Planning Commission. Let's hear from the community on those items. And then let's go back, refine those items, produce some final drafts. So really we're in the comprehensive plan draft stage. Uh, we're updating all the existing elements, getting ready to update goals and policies, major overhaul on that front. And tonight is uh, the public's opportunity to weigh in. Uh, with that being said, uh, as I mentioned, the workshop tonight really is meant to be an open house session. Uh, so what I would uh, strongly encourage you to do is identify uh, start with elements that are particularly important to you. Uh, the existing elements include land use, housing, economic development, transportation, utilities. Uh, there's a wide array here, capital facilities. Um, so if there are items that are particularly important to you, items that brought you here tonight, uh, I'd recommend you start there. Um, staff will be around the boards to answer any questions that you have. Uh, over the next month or so, uh, what we're gonna look for is public feedback on these goals and policies. We'll take all that information uh, and then start to update the actual language based on what we heard from the community. So the more input that we get here tonight and over the next month, uh, the more beneficial from the city perspective to make sure that our update aligns with the community vision. Uh, it's gonna be open format. Feel free to wander around, uh, flag anybody down, ask any questions that you have. Um, what we have is an online engagement platform, uh, and really the idea is a significant amount of content is available here tonight again, um, and what we can do is uh, assist, uh, assist anybody in person tonight finding the online platform to provide feedback on. Uh, we can take in-person comments here tonight as well, um, but over the next month, really what we wanna do is start to get some uh, thoughts, preferences, priorities, or suggested language related to these goals and policies moving forward. Uh, individual stations are provided here. You also see them around the room uh, here. Uh, again, a lot of content, uh, not expected to digest all of this here tonight, frankly impossible. Um, 
But what, what we would like you to do is just focus on areas that are important to you. And if you're not sure, uh, feel free to ask us and we can show you where your concerns, ideas, or preferences are either already identified or where they could be incorporated. Yes. Um, so I'm on the outside the boundary of Port Orchard. My address is Port Orchard. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's actually slated to be incorporated um, in the not too distant future. Yeah. Um, my comments will count just the same as everybody else's put into it, right? Yes, yes, sir, for sure. And uh, just for the record on the recording, the question was, um, if you're outside of the city currently, but in potentially the urban growth area that could be annexed in the future, can you provide comments? And absolutely, uh, the urban growth area is a specific area of focus in the comprehensive plan. Uh, and really from the city side, we wanna make sure that the urban growth area is considered as it could get incorporated. Uh, so the comprehensive plan contemplates the urban growth area just the same as it does existing city boundary too. So feed, feedback is absolutely welcome. Uh, with that being said, uh, I think we will break out into our individual sessions. Uh, so again, more than welcome to roam around, ask any questions. If you're not sure where to start, feel free to ask us and we can get you pointed in the right direction. Thank you guys.